Hey everyone, it's Johnny here and welcome to this video on how to find the limiting sum of an infinite GP or geometric progression. So let's first of all establish the context in which the formula up here to the right, that is the formula for an infinite geometric progression will be relevant for you. Okay, so we're dealing with a situation where you have a pattern of numbers like here. I've used this example of the first number being eight, followed by four, followed by two, followed by one, a half, a quarter, and so on. There's a pattern like this whereby to get from the first term to the second term, to get from eight to four, and then from the second term to the third term, from four to two, and so on, we are multiplying by the same number, including a fraction. So in this case, how do we get from eight to four? Well, we multiply it by... We multiply it by a half. And to get from 4 to 2, we multiply again by a half. So it is a situation, and you'll see that this just continues on. It is a situation where we have a pattern of numbers together. And to get from one number to the next, from left to right, we are multiplying by the same number each time. And in this case, it is the fraction 1 half. So we have what's called a common ratio, okay, and that is represented by R. So we have a common ratio, which in this case is a half. That is, we have a number that we multiply all of the numbers in the series by to get to the next number, okay? It's got to be common. It's got to be consistent. It's always a half in this case. Okay, so that's the first thing. We have a pattern of numbers with a common ratio. So you can keep multiplying by half to find the next term. What we're also going to be dealing with here is a situation where we don't just have these numbers listed, we're actually going to be adding them together. Okay, so there is a plus sign between each of these terms. So it's not just a list, we actually want to add them. We want to find the sum. That's what the S here means, the sum of this pattern, of this geometric progression. This is called a geometric progression or geometric sequence, as some say. Okay, so we have a geometric progression. The reason it's a geometric progression is because we have a common ratio between the numbers. Okay, so now that we've established that, what's important about this infinite sum idea? Well, notice that the numbers keep going forever. Okay, so Basically, we're going to keep adding the numbers for infinity. So it's not like the sequence here stops at a quarter. There continues to be a plus sign and then we have a dot, 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 an ellipsis here representing the fact that this is going to actually just keep going forever. And obviously, we're not going to write the numbers forever. Okay, so look for that dot, dot, dot. It's very important. If you don't have the dot, 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 if you don't have the sequence continuing forever then this formula will not be relevant and you will just have a simple geometric progression with so many terms. If we cut the sequence off here, how many terms would we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. You would have a GP with six terms and you would go and apply the regular formula for a geometric progression or rather for the sum of a geometric progression. And if you can't remember that formula, just to put it over here on the side for you. So if it didn't go forever, for instance, it would be S6 would equal A bracket 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. So that's the sum of a GP where it doesn't go forever. Okay? Notice also that I've got the R to the N and the R here after the 1. There's a different variation of this formula that you might be familiar with where it actually goes A bracket r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. So the 1 and the r's here would be in the opposite order. And that would be the case if the ratio was greater than 1 or less than negative 1. Okay, so the reason I've got it in this order is because in this case, our r sits between negative 1 and 1, which means I apply this version of the formula. Okay, another way of writing that is that the absolute value of r is less than 1 because that includes negative ones. 
Okay, so that's the formula you would apply if it didn't go forever. You can watch our other videos on the sums of GPs uh, for more on that. Now, the last thing to mention, which I've just alluded to here, is the fact that the, the ratio here is between negative one. This is very important. The ratio is between negative one and one. That is the fundamental condition here. If you don't have a situation where the ratio, which in this case is, again, a half, if the ratio, the common ratio, the number that each term is multiplying to get to the next is not between negative one and one, then you cannot apply this formula, okay? Because the idea here is that by multiplying by a number between negative one and one, by doing that, what's actually going to happen is you can see it here, we're really going to get closer and closer to zero in terms of the numbers that are being added. The numbers are not going to keep getting bigger, right? So we wouldn't have a limit in sum if it went 8 followed by 16 followed by 32, for instance, because those numbers are doubling. The numbers that we're adding aren't getting smaller. We need the numbers that we're adding to tend towards zero. These need to move towards zero. See how a quarter is closer to zero than eight? It's also closer to zero than a half. That's going to keep happening. Okay, so if we were to add all of these together, including all of the fractions that are going to come after, what number do you think we're going to get closer to? Well, let's just think about it before I apply the form. So we have eight plus four, which is 12, plus two, which is 14, plus one, which is 15. So by this point, up to the one, we're up to 15. And then after 15, we go 15 and a half, followed by 15 and three quarters. Okay, so we're at 15 and a half, 15 and three quarters. If we were then to add one eighth, right, we would be at 15 and seven eighths. But we're never going to get to 16 because the number you're then adding is never going to be as big as the previous one. So if you're at 15 and 7 eighths, you would need one more eighth to be added. But that's not going to happen because the next number is going to be half of an eighth, which is a 16th. So we can see intuitively here that this sum, if we keep adding the numbers on, we're getting closer and closer to 16. So that should reflect in our formula here. So here is the formula. Here's the formula. If you want to find an infinite sum, if you want to find an infinite sum, then what you do is you get the first term A. And by the way, A in this case is 8 because it's the first term. Okay, so A over 1 minus R. It's a very simple formula. And then if we apply it here, we are going to get 8 over 1 minus a half, which equals 8 over a half. which equals 16. And you could put that in your calculator, of course, but if you want to know how to manually do that yourself, what you do is you clearly distinguish between the big fraction and the small fraction. Because you have 8 divided by a half, you've kind of got this weird situation where you've got a fraction within the fraction. Sometimes you'll get a fraction over another fraction. Here we just have 8 over the half, but you could have something like 8 over 9 divided by a half. The important thing there is to really emphasize the big line here, the big fraction. It's eight over a half and the half down here is actually the smaller fraction. So make sure you put that in your calculator the right way. And the way you would manually do it is you simply go to the smaller fraction, so the half here, and you multiply it, you multiply the bottom of the big fraction by the bottom of the smaller fraction. So a half times two, and then what you do to the bottom, you do to the top to keep everything fair, and then you have a half times two. What happens is the reason we multiplied it by two in the first place is because a half times two is the same as a half times two over one, which is exactly what we're doing to manipulate this so that we can cross off the twos, right? Because two over two is just one over one. So we get rid of those, and then we're left with eight times two on the top, which equals 16, and that was our answer down here. So you would also get that in the calculator. Okay, so that's the important thing about uh, doing a manual fraction, but more importantly, that's how you solve 
for the limiting sum because it's limiting because it's it's getting closer and closer in this case, as we said, towards 16. Okay, because the numbers we're adding on are getting smaller and smaller over time. Even if it said 8 and negative 4, then positive 2, then negative 1, meaning the common ratio was a negative a half, it would still work. You would still be able to get an answer by putting it in here. Just be careful when the ratio is negative because you will end up with 1 minus a negative ratio like this. So it would be 1 minus negative a half if the ratio is negative a half, which would create a positive there. So it would be 1 plus a half, which would be 3 over 2. Okay, so that would be a situation where the R was negative a half. You would get the positive on this denominator here. Okay, I hope that helps, guys. Just to recap a few things. Make sure that you only apply this where it is a GP, not an AP. So a geometric progression where there is this common multiplier. You also want that common ratio or multiplier to be between negative 1 and 1. And you also need to make sure that the series is in fact going forever. So look for the words infinite sum or look for a dot 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 when the question presents the series. All right, if you've got any questions, please comment below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.